Did you know that chickens can jump and fly too? Domestication of the chicken dates back to at least 2000 BCE. They do have the required feathers and muscles to fly, but they don't do it much anymore hundreds of years after they were domesticated. But if you give them the right motivation, they can do that. If they think the other side of the fence is cool, they can jump up to six feet. Some hens hop on the trees to roost. Picture a tree with a couple of chickens on it. Looks so funny. Their motivation is safety. The tree serves as a cover for them in the daytime and protects them from winged predators. Similarly, at night, the tree turns into a shelter from wind and rain and the possible attacks from ground predators. This doesn't have to be in the wild. Farms where chickens can wander around freely also have tree nests. Some sneaky chickens leave their coop and jump onto the trees. So, many chicken owners search for ways to keep them under control. Hey Siri, search for how to deal with jumping chickens. All right, you're scuba diving in the ocean, watching corals and colorful fish flitting by, when suddenly an enormous shadow appears above you. You look up and see a massive creature approaching you, its mouth a gaping abyss. Relax, just stay still and you'll be fine. This leviathan is a basking shark, one of the scary sea monsters that isn't really capable of doing harm to anyone. Basking sharks are filter feeders, just like baleen whales. They open their large mouths to swallow plankton and don't even have teeth. It's late night in the Central American jungle. You're out in the wild to watch birds and you hear flapping of wings. Excited, you look intently into your night vision goggles, only to see a face out of your worst nightmares. Ah, don't scream, you'll scare it away. It's a perfectly harmless, wrinkle-faced bat, and it isn't interested in you. These are fruit bats, and wrinkles on their faces allow them to collect fruit pieces and juice for later snacks. By the way, their Latin name, Centurocenex, was given to them for their semblance to 100-year-old humans. Walking around a Nepali National Park and deciding to wash your face in the river nearby, you freeze in terror. A crocodile is looking straight at you from no more than a few feet's distance. Then it raises its snout above the water and you exhale in relief. It's a gharial. These reptiles have long and narrow snouts that allow them to efficiently catch fish and at the same time prohibiting them from hunting any other prey. While still carnivores, gharials are pretty shy and will slither away at the sight of humans. Right now, there are no more than a thousand of these crocodilians in the whole world. So let it go. Especially if it's a girl gharial. <laughs> you dig your garden in the backyard and notice something moving on your shovel. You take a closer look and drop the tool in horror. A small creature looking like a hostile alien is scurrying away into some burrow in the ground. Eh, no worries. It's just a star-nosed mole. These critters have peculiar snouts that look like they've been blown up from within. Their eyes are small and weak, so the star on their nose helps them a lot to move around and seek food. It's always on the move, touching everything it can reach as if the tendrils were tiny fingers. Oh, you're bathing in the ocean again. Well, look to your right, there's a real tooth shark going right at you. Nah, don't panic. It's just a sand tiger shark. Neither a sand nor a tiger one, it's a vulnerable fish-eating shark that slowly swims in the seas and chases its prey from time to time. There have been no reports of it ever attacking humans, but it still has rows of sharp teeth. So don't try to touch it just in case. It may seem placid, but you don't want it to get a bite out of you, do you? Okay, from ocean to desert, you're in Australia and longing for some water. You see a likely spot and start digging the ground only to stumble upon a creature straight from the depths of neither, all covered in thorns. It eyes you suspiciously and slinks away because it's just a thorny devil. Despite its ominous name, this lizard is harmless to humans. Horn-like bumps on its skin are for protection from predators and birds of prey. The thorns are hard, but as long as you don't touch them, you're fine. Now, if you have arachnophobia, it won't calm you down. But 
tailless whip scorpions you might meet in North and South America, as well as Asia and Africa, are more afraid of you than you are of them. Eh, tell yourself that. These nightmarish creatures don't have stingers and won't even bite when threatened. The worst they could do, and only if you corner them, why would you do that, is prick you with their front legs, leaving tiny puncture marks on your finger. Many people even keep them as pets, and they're quite affectionate toward their owners. Yeah. If you ever stumble upon a burrow from which a hairless, big-toothed creature is speaking at you, just don't mind it and let it be. Naked mole rats are the sphinx cats among rodents. They're close relatives of mole rats, but, well, naked. And they're fascinating in their own right, too, thanks to living entirely underground. They're almost totally cold-blooded, but can conform to any temperature outside. And their flappy, wrinkled skin doesn't feel any pain at all. So pins and prickles, as well as sharp teeth, don't scare naked mole rats. You're once again lost in the jungle, this time on Madagascar. Poor you. The night has fallen, and you seek shelter. But when you think you've found a suitable tree to build a lean-to, you freeze in terror. A black, long-fingered hand appears on a tree branch right above you, and two huge yellow eyes are staring you down. Then you see a shaggy face and realize it's just a lemur. An eye-eye, more precisely. This creature is native to Madagascar and only goes out at night, so you're lucky to see it. It fulfills a role of a woodpecker in tropical forests. It knocks on tree trunks to find bugs and uses its long, wizened fingers to reach inside. Tired of being scared, you seek your way home, but your horrors aren't over yet. There's a big red and white snake across your path. It hisses and lies in wait for you to move. You know it's a coral snake, a really dangerous, venomous kind. You stop in your tracks, and only when it finally slithers away, you realize it was actually a milk snake. They often mimic venomous ones, not only coral snakes, to protect themselves from predators. Still, if you're not a snake expert, it's always best to stay away. Okay, this creature will infest your darkest dreams. A giant African millipede. It's big, it's glossy black, and it has hundreds of tiny crawly legs. And yet, if it had googly eyes, it could even be cute. Perhaps that's why so many people keep them as pets. That, and because they commonly live up to 10 years. Giant millipedes can't really bite. Their only defense is curling into a tight ball and secreting irritating liquid from the pores of its skin. If you dare touch it, don't rub your eyes or nose afterwards. It's quite unpleasant. Ah, uh, isn't it a cute horse standing over there? But wait, is it sleeping? In reality, the animal you see is just dozing. It'll still need to lie down to have proper REM, which stands for rapid eye movement sleep. In people, this is the stage when we dream. Your arms and legs can't move during REMs. If they did, you'd start to act your dreams out and could accidentally hurt yourself. But back to that horse. Even though it's only dozing while standing up, that's still an impressive feat. You won't be able to repeat it. Horses have a system of tendons and ligaments that help them stay upright with ease. The major joints in the legs get locked, and the animal can relax and catch some Zs without worrying about crashing to the ground. Oh, by the way, the amount of REM sleep horses need is surprisingly small. Usually, it's a series of short intervals, two or three hours a day in total. That's why they don't have to lie down often. But some animals do it just because they feel more comfortable that way. Horses take naps while standing because sleeping isn't safe enough when they're lying down. It's rather tricky for a horse to get up from the ground, and it's a waste of precious time. While a horse is struggling to get to its feet, some meat-eater can tackle the animal down and uh, make it its dinner. That's why horses only lie down for short periods of time. They also have a special lookout system, when one animal is watching over the others while they're napping. Each member of the herd gets to play the role of the watch horse. Anyway, not only horses, but also zebras, elephants, giraffes, some birds like flamingos, and sometimes even cows can take naps while standing up. But then, why not humans? Well, to pull off this trick, 
your legs would have to be aligned vertically and your knees be able to lock in place. Then you wouldn't need much effort to keep yourself upright. But it's not how your body's built. If you're exhausted, you might fall asleep while standing up. But you'd immediately wake up and this would prevent your body from hitting the floor. Your muscles start to gradually relax during each next stage of sleep. And very soon after you doze off, they won't be able to hold you upright anymore. Shh! It's a quiet winter night, and the bird perched on the top tree branch seems to be sleeping. And then there's some noise. A human would hardly notice it, so quiet it is. But the owl, and that's what the bird is, has perfect hearing. It's even more important for this creature than good eyesight. In the blink of an eye, the bird moves. Whoa! It looks like its head is facing backwards. Owls are so flexible, they can twist their heads in an almost full circle. These birds have fixed eye sockets, so it means their eyeballs don't rotate and they somehow have to make up for it. Twisting the head up to 270 degrees is only possible because it's connected to the body in a particular, very clever way. And the tissues and blood vessels where the neck meets the body can't snap. They're designed to flex. Owls also have many vertebrae, tiny bones that make up the spine and neck. It's another thing that helps them perform their head-swiveling trick. Now, you have a totally different neck structure, but it still serves all your needs. Humans have spherical eyes and can move them freely, unlike owls. You simply don't need your neck to turn all the way around. But yes, it would be a great party trick. A goblin shark is swimming unhurriedly through the deep sea when it notices a yummy-looking fish. The shark starts to inch closer to its future meal. But the fish notices the hunter and tries to dart away. And then, like in a horror movie, the larger animal thrusts its jaw out of its mouth and grabs the fish. The goblin shark's terrifying jaws are attached to elastic ligaments. They can unfold from its snout for up to 3 inches. It allows the animal to catapult its mouth forward to catch an unfortunate fish or squid or whatnot. If only your mouth could do the same, then you'd be able to munch on stuff dangling 7 inches away from your face without using your hands to grab the food. And no, we're not so concerned about table manners here. So you're lying on your bed in a hotel room in a tropical country and lazily watching a small gecko. It's running across the floor reaching the wall. Hmm, look, it's scaling it. And right now, it's hanging upside down over your head. Geckos can stick to all kinds of surfaces, thanks to their bulbous toes. They're covered with hundreds of microscopic hairs, and each hair, in turn, splits off into even tinier bristles. This creates such a strong physical bond that the hair molecules and the surface molecules start to interact, and it creates an electromagnetic attraction. This method allows geckos to stick and unstick their toes and feet lightning fast. They can dash across different surfaces at 20 body lengths per second. Unfortunately, this super ability is also unavailable for humans. The only thing your fingers and toes can do is wrinkle after being in the water for too long. This improves your grip on wet objects by channeling the water away, just like rain treads in your car tires. And your friends can call you pruny hands. Hey, I didn't say it was a compliment. Each of the tarsier's eyes is as big as the animal's brain. That's a not-so-subtle sign that vision is crucial for these small animals. Their huge eyeballs don't move. A tarsier has to turn its whole head if it needs to look to the left or to the right. On the bright side, ding, the animal can see in almost total darkness and hunt insects, lizards, and small birds even at night. The tarsier's eyes gather and reflect even the tiniest specks of light. It gives the creature a clear picture of what's happening around. That's why these eyes are like the animal kingdom's equivalent of night vision goggles. Is there a benefit for zebras to have their fascinating pattern? Scientists asked this question too and experimented. They dressed up horses with zebra look-alike coats. The coat was covering the whole body of the horses but their heads. It turns out that zebra patterns repel flies. Scientists observe that flies only go for the heads of the animals and stay away from the horse bodies. Ants are known as hard-working animals, even in the tails. That's got a legit reflection in real life. 
they can carry up to 20 times more weight than their own body weight. These insects have other noble qualities too. If an ant gets seriously injured, it'll refuse treatment from the colony's paramedic ant. The ant knows that it can't make it, so instead of wasting the colony's resources, this ant forces the paramedic ant to carry on without it. Camels can survive around 15 days without drinking water. Many people assume that they store water in their humps. No, nope, humps are for food storage in the form of fat. The water is kept in their bloodstream. Speaking of camels, in some countries, there's a tradition to hold camel beauty contests. For instance, a contest was held in the 2022 World Cup in Qatar as an attraction. You see a giant housefly in the house, but it flees from your ninja's hands. You might think that nature will take care of it in a couple of days, but actually, houseflies can live for about a month or two. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.